I've had my trusty old fluke meter for between 20 and 25 years now. I've had it a long time, maybe even longer than that. Who knows? I, I do remember that when I first, um, when I got it, I'd uh, just left a company where I'd had one as standard and toolkit. And I just got used to having it. And although it was crippling expensive because it was the super industrial one, with the one of the first meters that really had proper industrial HRC fuse protection inside it, um, although it was super expensive, I managed to coax myself into buying one. And, well, you know, 25 years later, I think that was a good, you know, that was a good move. However, in this day and age, I need maybe, well, the recent um, video where I measured the current going into an ionizer, I needed something that measured AC microamps. And to do that, I ended up using, because this won't do microamps, I ended up using one of the cheapy meters. And these, these meters are great. They're, they're ideal. They're only about between five and ten pounds each. And they're perfect for applications where you, you want to just have a wee extra meter and you just want to monitor a voltage and you set it to the voltage, you stick the connectors on and then, you know, that's it. You can leave it at the side of the bench and get on with using the other meters for other things. So these are quite handy, but it, it's not ideal. They don't have a good, they're not safe. They don't have the high energy protection. And I decided it's time to buy a new one. So I shopped about a bit. I looked at um, Dave's reviews on the EEV blog. And originally I was going to set off the X-Tech because although I quite like the idea of another fluke, the flukes are just cripplingly expensive for what you're getting. You're not getting that much more of a feature range um, over some of the other meters that are on offer. And the other one I looked at was at the sort of lower side of the scale. It was the X-Tech. And Dave seemed to have absolutely nothing nice to say about the X-Tech at all. But I get the feeling that this is actually made in the same factory as the X-Tech. And I got this one from a company called... Oh, what was it? What were they called? Amical, Aerospace Metrology and Electromechanical Calibration Limited. Oh, that sounds a really posh name. And it looks as though it's just a rebadged standard meter. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to see how things have evolved, because that video that Dave put out was some time ago. And I, I just thought, well, let's actually go for this one, because... I'm getting, for if I wanted a fluke meter with true RMS, it was just going to be, you know, the price was going to be silly. The other meter I did consider from Fluke was the Fluke 18B+, Plus, but it appears they're not readily available over here in the UK. They're especially for the Chinese market, um, where, you know, I mean, it, it was just a nice simple meter. It had a modest number of ranges, and it had the LED test, which went up to 6 volts, which was quite handy. Um, and the only supplier I could find of the Fluke 18B Plus was in China. And to be honest, I didn't want to buy that Fluke, which was quite, exp you know, it, it wasn't expensive. It was about 80 quid or something. And I didn't want to actually get that through and find it was actually a knockoff. I, I don't even know how you'd tell because um, all the Flukes, well, this Fluke here was made in America. All the modern Flukes seem to be made in China. So um, I was just wary about that. I didn't want a, I, I didn't want to pay a lot of money for a ship meter, basically. So I researched a bit and decided ultimately to go for this one. And I, I have actually one of the reasons, uh, another reason that I was going for the new meter. I didn't know how accurate this is because after twenty five years, this has never been calibrated. And though it's the old school ones with the precision resistor array in them. Uh, the sort of all the, 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 I think it's, I can't remember what make it is, is it, uh, oh, I can't remember, there used to be a name, was it Beckman or something, I can't remember, but they used to have these precision arrays, um, and I'm pretty sure this one has it under cover. And I had a digital meter, I did, not a digital meter, but I had a digital power supply, and uh, yeah, I set the digital power supply to 12 volts, and this was not displaying 12 volts, and I set it to 5 volts, and this was not displaying 5 volts, and I thought, which is wrong? Because it's very hard to tell, because all the different meters I tried had slightly different readings. So, it turns out that it's the power supply that's a bit wonky with its readings. It's not that accurate, because it uses a, a digital display, but then a digital to analog converter, and then, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's just not accurate. But uh, it's close, but just not quite there. So anyway, I ended up going for this meter, and I did some comparisons. I'll put these ones out of the way. 
I got my trusty, and this is just as old to be honest, my little resistor substitution box. And I put it to various resistor readings and compared the new meter to the old Fluke. And here's what I got. In 10 ohms, I got 10.3 in the new meter and 10.2 in the Fluke. 100 ohms, 100.3 versus 100.3. 1K, 996 versus 998. 10K, 9.93 versus 9.93. 100K, 99.7 versus 99.8. 1 mega ohm, 0 0.996 to 0 0.996. You can't complain about that, can you? Because I get the feeling, and I'm impressed of this case, that this is a, quite a high quoted accuracy. Um, what is the quoted accuracy of this one? It had a chart. Um, voltage DC is plus or minus 0 0.09, so say 0.1% accuracy. And that kind of suggests that my old fluke meter there, after 25 years, it is pretty damn accurate. I'm impressed at that. So now, I did some DC voltage tests next uh, on the shonky power supply from Maplin. And at 3.3 volts DC on the power supply's display, it said 3.298 versus 3.3. So actually pretty close there. 5 volt DC came out at 4.98 versus 4.99, which again, that's pretty close. 12 volts DC came out 11.87 versus 11.88, and 24 volts DC came out 23.81 versus 23.84. So, again, really coming very close to each other. The mains, just sticking it in the uh, uh, local socket here, came out at 241.4 volts AC versus 240.3 on the Fluke. Again, fairly close, good enough. Um, th what's that? That's still well within 1% tolerance. Uh, that's well within 0.5% tolerance, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, um, all good results. LED testing, where you just stick it across an LED on the diode test. This one lights the LEDs a little bit brighter and shows forward voltage up to about 2 volts, I think it is. Uh, I don't know if it goes much higher. It wouldn't display the forward voltage on... Hold on, let's uh, stick it across an LED right now. So, uh, mode diode check. Get the LED the right way around. That would really help. Lights the LED visibly. I don't know if you're seeing that. But won't display the voltage of that LED. However, if you put it across a red LED, it does display the voltage of the red LED. And it lights it, if I can get the connections on here. 1.763. And to be fair, the Fluke also showed this uh, LED's forward voltage. Other things. Um, it has temperature facility. It comes with a thermocouple. It also comes with these plugs in the 10 amp range. Oh, I should mention one of the main features here. It's got Category 4 protection, which is one of the highest, up to 600 volts, and Category 3 to 1000 volts. And that's important. It basically means that if you have a little instant, if you stick it to amps, and you stick it into a three-phase you know, power supply to a big, huge machine or distribution equipment, whereas cheaper, cheaper meters like this would go bang. Quite literally, they would explode. You'd see flames and everything coming out the sides, and you'd probably burn your hand or a face. Uh, lots of uh, major uh, injuries with meters exploding, whereas this one, if it's got the proper protection, like the Fluke, then it'll have the large HRC fuses inside that will actually break that fault condition in a controlled manner. Okay, you'll have an expensive fuse to change, but it's better than having your face blown off. K-type thermocouple. Plug it in, and this is where you realise just how cold my workshop is. Turn it round to temperature. Oh, I should mention that uh, this uh, meter has good uh, display, but uh, it's twice the height of the Fluke one, but it's, um, it tilts it forward, which is great for me, but not so great for you guys. So I'll tilt it back a wee bit so you can see. It is a very clear display. It's 13.4 degrees centigrade, or 56 degrees Fahrenheit if you're, if you're so inclined. It has an illuminated display as well, which is quite nice. And uh, I think it's time... Oh, just don't go in there, there's go in there. Lots of little dust covers. Oh, this thing is also claims to be IP67. 
Um, so, um, I think it's time to take this to bits. I should say it also comes with a little usual carrying pouch, which is quite nice. So on the back it's got the probe holders for when you're uh, wanting single-handed testing. Oops. So you can actually just, uh, you can clip one of the probes in like that. Oh, and it's also got probe guards um, for when you're poking amongst live equipment, uh, which are detachable, which is also good. Um, it's also got maximum monitoring, the manual range, automatic range, it's got the, it's got the micro amps. Um, in AC or DC, it's got, you can make a volt measurement relative. If you've got, say, a, a voltage of 12 volts, you want to see how much it changes, you can press relative and it'll zero it out, it'll null it out, and then you can see the difference. But let's see, uh, let's uh, get the battery pack out and see, I don't know how much access there is. Uh, guessing this is the battery compartment. So I have to say, I am pretty impressed at uh, how the, well, the flukes held its accuracy. That's very good. You're supposed to get your, uh, the electrical industry in Britain has just been filled with red tape to the point of self-destruction. It's just so many freeloaders that they've got this industry and meter, you're supposed to send your meters for calibration every year or something like that if you work in the electrical industry. Um, but that's just, now see, this looks like a cheap shitty battery. This is a cheap shitty battery with dents. Well, that's not going back in. Um, the fuses are not accessible from here. It's got a very deep... Uh, this, is this, this must be part of the water protection also, maybe for... I don't think you'd get much of a blast out there if it... If it let's get the other screws out. Yeah, there's a bit of an industry in Britain. Uh, for every electrician, there's about ten people uh, masquerading around with clipboards and high-vis jackets on, doing nothing. It's the whole country is just full of freeloading useless people passing themselves off as safety consultants and um, electrical certification experts helped by an organisation called the NICEIC which presents itself as a uh, almost like a governmental body but in fact is a completely privately owned and profit-making company much like McDonald's. I've got lots of opinions in the NIC, EIC, but they're liturgists, so I won't say them. Other than it's just nothing more than a protection racket for large contractors. It's uh, it's not uh, a good thing. Uh, though having said that, uh, since they managed to wangle the whole Part P situation, whereby everybody doing work in a domestic environment has to have a Part P certification, now they've uh, found they can cash in on absolutely every Tom, Dick or Harry can now be an electrician. It's the worst thing that ever happened to the electrical industry. So let's uh, take this apart. See, I am ranting now. I'm just going to change the subject there. Look at that uh, seam here. Look at that thick seam in there. That is very good. The purpose of the really thick overlapping lip is not just for waterproofing, but um, if something blows up inside, and look at the size of this fuse, that's great. These are two ceramic fuses in here. That's a good start. Uh, the point of the thick lip is if, if something, if it fails catastrophically inside, oh look at that, is that a resistor array? Excuse me, getting distracted here. Uh, the point of the thick lip is if something blows up inside, it's going to contain it, it's not going to shoot flames and plasma out the side, because the plasma, uh, the discharge, uh, you know, when something blows up electrically, it's almost like a welding arc, and if it comes out the side uh, as that blue flash, um, it's not just metal-laden plasma, it can actually carry electrical current as well. These fuses are just huge, which is good. Um, this is similar to the one, this is very much, I recognise this track at the bottom that uh, Dave of EEV Blog didn't really care much the fact that they'd actually bodged round it, it's as if the circuit board had cracked while they were putting it together and they'd bodged a bit of wire over there. He also pulled it up on this wire coming across here, but that wire is coming over from the common 
The 10 amp is basically going straight into this fuse, which is good. The shorter the tracks, the better for that. And if that's the common for the 10 amp, then actually I think that's quite reasonable to run a wire across there because that's the current shunt that's measuring the 10 amp supply here. And to run an equivalent track, it would have to be a very thick track, so it actually makes sense to run a wire across. It's going to save, uh, it's going to just make it more robust in the event of actual high current flowing in that circuit. The lower current, the microamp and milliamp one, which this fuse protects, is this little track coming down here, which to me is a slight weakness because it's quite thin. Almost I'd have been happier if they'd just run another bit of wire in for that. This little potential uh, little re resistor chain down here where there's zigzag backwards and forwards to save space. There's the PTC um, thermistor, the electronic fuse effect that protects um, probably the... Um, the general input. Yes, it is. It's protecting the general input. Then there, there are these probably PT. Uh, these are probably metal oxide varistors, which are going to shunt that if uh, you know the voltage goes too high. So that's the input protection, and that actually looks fairly robust. And it's it, actually it looks nicer than the one in Dave's uh, meter that he took to bits, which I'm guessing is actually just the same. I do recall seeing that in the meter Dave took to bits. Uh, that, it's got MPR, precision resistor array. I'm not 100% sure that is. Or is that maybe some module just dedicated to dealing with the RMS? I'm not 100% sure. There's the main processor. I'm not really sure what that is. One four, is it one four one nine? CEF or GEF? I'm not one hundred percent sure. And then it says F five nine nine two two DMM. So possibly a dedicated meter uh, chip. I can see one two three four of the little trimmer pots plus these two high accuracy pots the multi-turn trimmers and the layout you know I'm not going to go in much further because I don't the last thing I want to do is start nudging this out of uh, calibration because I don't have the facilities to recalibrate it if I do um, but you know from what I'm seeing here with the short tracks and the wires for the high current side and and the high rupture capacity fuses I think this actually looks quite a decent meter certainly for the money because the it cost Hold on. This is the eBay listing I got it off, which was a quality wholesale testers, which it turns out uh, when it, I made the payment, it came up amical. Um, and it cost £56.64, inclusive of shipping, which to me is just outstandingly good value, particularly now that I see inside the meter. And I've tested it and seen that it's, you know, producing quite consistent results. There's the battery contacts that uh, just actually go on to the pads here in the circuit board. This is pretty good, I think. I th I'm quite impressed at this. The main circuit board is held in by a lot of screws as well. It's actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Unless these two are actually holding something else in. You know, I'm going to have to take it a bit somewhere. Oh, you kind of knew I was going to do this. Oh, they're coming out quite nicely. They almost felt like they're into little metal inserts, but I don't think they are. I think they're self-tappers. Oh, I'm going to have to take these uh, these off as well. Oop, rubber band gets caught in the Lock nuts. I don't have my set of uh, deep little uh, nut spinners over here. That's a bit of a shame. Spring washers. That's also a good sign. Yeah, so far I'm rating this meter quite highly.
I will say uh, it doesn't, it's not as fast as a fluke in stabilising once it gets a reading. You, you have to be a bit more patient with it in that regard. It, uh, on resistance, you can connect a resistor and st the fluke goes bing, there's your resistance. But in this one, it actually takes me a while to settle, but it's not a huge dramatic length of time. Oh, another test I, I didn't show you was uh, I did uh, one of Dave's favourite tests, the response responsiveness to the continuity. And it kind of matches almost exactly the fluke. It does latch it, and uh, but there's a tiny delay before it responds. But that's okay, it's not a, a, it's not a major thing. Are these screws all the same size, so I can put them back in proper places? Now, I'm going to have to be careful what I unscrew here. I don't want to actually unscrew crucial things, which I probably am. Oh, what's the worst that could happen? A dead meter is the worst that could happen. I'll make a wild guess that these come out. I don't know if these come out or not. I mean, they'll come out. But whether I should be taking them out is debatable. This will also give me a chance to have a look at the other side of the circuit board with regards to the what's actually the, the size of the tracks and the protection circuitry. I like big tracks and protection circuitry. Because if they're going to see high current, it's good that they're going to deal with that current properly. Okay, I think that's everything. Ooh. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, these screws are actually for the display, so I'm going to put a few of them back in. I'll put those diagonally back in, because uh, I left that one over there in, and uh, I see it's coming off. And again, I'm going to be very careful not to touch the little trimmer pots. I don't want to knock it off calibration. That would be... That would be annoying. Okay. Righto, there's not really a lot to see. I wouldn't say the tracks are absolutely huge down this area. I'm guessing maybe they protect the joining tracks for those uh, Metal oxide varistors that's actually directly on this side. There's not really a lot to see on this side, is there? No, it says it's pretty empty actually. Just the usual arrangement of those uh, sliding spring contacts. Oh, as uh, Dave mentioned uh, as well, there is a sort of gold-ish coating on them, but it's very thin. It's that molecular chemical gold plating on the contacts, so it's uh, it's not super mega industrial, but it's good enough. Okay, you know what? This I think this is a good choice of meter. I, I'm quite happy with that altogether. It seems robust. It seems you know it, like it's got a rubbery coating outside the casing, not quite the ribbed. Uh, one that the Fluke has, but having said that, it, it seems quite a robust little unit. Looks as though it's uh, going to uh, stand a bit of wear and tear. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that, I think. Yes, indeed.